Hello students, welcome to the GDC classes in English. So today is the lecture for the topic rheology that is yet again a very important topic from your exam point of view. It, all, it comes under the section of physical pharmacy and as I have already uh, mentioned that this is a really really important topic from your GPAD point of view and other pharmacist exams also. This topic actually it is based on the study of how the fluids are going to flow mainly under the conditions of stress or under the influence of any strain the how these fluids are going to behave based upon their viscosity their elasticity how these fluids are going to perform so we will be seeing some of the basic applications some of the basic things that are actually required to understand the understand the phenomena behind it okay so let's dive into our topic yes so first I am going to explain you a little basic detail about what actually this rheology holds. Okay. So now uh, starting with the topic, starting with the basics of our topic that is rheology. As I have already mentioned, reho means what? Reho means the flow and logi means the science. Okay. So the science behind the flow of material that study comes under the rheology. Okay. So basically, we have to study that what are the applications it offers in our pharmaceuticals where this study, where this flow actually helps. Okay, so the applications behind them includes the pharmaceutical processing. First is the pharmaceutical processing. Pharmaceutical processing operations which include which includes the mixing which includes the filling which includes the packaging all right so all these pharmaceutical operations are actually based upon the nature of the flow of the particles right of the materials that you are using okay another thing that it is very important to understand how the topical things how the topical formulations are going to behave. So, topical application on the skin. So, the topical formulations that you are designing are actually very reliable on the flow properties because we need to see the runny nature, we need to see the viscosity, the formulation of the thing that we are using. Okay. So, we need to understand the basic science so that we can understand its flow, which can be later applied for the formulation characteristics. Okay. Another important thing that you should know that the physical stability of the formulation also depends on the rheological characteristics. Okay. Next includes the bioavailability. Okay. So as I have mentioned, how this release, how this flow property, how this flow of material, this can also influence the release of drug from its dosage form which indirectly acts as a parameter for also evaluating the bioavailability okay so all these things the flow of material flow of the drug from its dosage form how it is going to ooze out how it is going to come into the release medium okay so that also depends on the flow properties the rheological properties of the material okay so now bioavailability as well as the release of drug release of drug from the dosage form okay so these are some basic applications that you should keep in mind while studying about the flow the science behind the flow okay now, before understanding what actually happens, we should know two terms. Okay, there, there are two terms that are interconvertible also, but yet they are very different apart, poles apart from each other. These two terms are the elasticity and the viscosity. Okay, so both of these properties are very important for you to understand the flow behavior of the materials. So, we will now understand these two terminologies including the elasticity and viscosity 
as in the image itself you can see the elastic there is some deformation into uh, from its original state okay when this state this force this deformation this force that is causing the deformation sorry is withdrawn is released it get back to its original state okay that is termed as elasticity while in case of viscosity as you can see in the image also the viscosity of the fluid the viscosity of the fluid that is coming out of the bottle there is some force that is applied then it is pumped out of it okay so there are two different properties but they are causing some deformation under the influence of some stress which is causing them to change their position right change their original state so in elasticity or in viscosity viscosity you should know that this this these actually comes under the any deformation of matter any deformation of matter that occurs under the influence under the influence of stress okay these deformations that i have mentioned these deformation of matter are included in both elasticity and viscosity okay both the deformations the elasticity and viscosity differs by one thing that in case of elasticity once the force is withdrawn it gets back to its original position okay you should know that in case the deformation of matter which occurs in under the influence of stress whenever this force is withdrawn whenever this force is removed the material comes back to its original state but in case of viscosity this is not going to happen the material will not gain its original position back okay right so you should mention that in elastic elasticity the original state is restored in case of elasticity the original state is restored okay but not in the case of viscosity the original state is not restored so this property by which any matter gets to gets to back its original position can be explained or can be called as an elastic material the property can be explained by a law known as the hooke's law okay which is actually based on the fact that these materials upon the force is withdrawn can actually get back to their original state this can be mentioned as dl sigma upon e this sigma is actually the applied stress and this e is the young's modulus okay which is actually the here the modulus of elasticity this is the modulus of elasticity okay so this hooke's law is based on the elasticity of any material under the deformation or stress that has been applied okay. that is termed as an elastic material okay now coming to the viscosity part we have seen that if if the for a material to be called as a pure viscous okay for a pure viscous flow you must know for a pure viscous flow there is a continuous movement there is a continuous movement during the applied force during the applied force and as soon as this force is withdrawn as i've mentioned there is no restoration that is going to happen okay so you should understand this there is no restoration that is going to happen okay that is not possible okay now another major thing to note down although the restoration is not going to happen but one major thing that you should know that that there exist a temperature dependence on the viscosity let's say if the materials are in liquid state the upon increasing the temperature the viscosity is going to reduce similarly in case of gases the if if we increase the temperature the viscosity is going to enhance 
so the differences between the nature of these materials the differences in the interaction between these materials have led to this change in their behavior change in the way they behave under the influence of temperature right temperature difference so there is a difference between the temperature there is a difference between the states and how these particles are going to behave so you must know i would like and this can be explained why an, uh, with an equation also i would mention here only i have just said that there exists a temperature dependence on the viscosity there exists a temperature dependence on the viscosity of the material okay so this temperature dependence as i've mentioned in case of liquids if the temperature rises the viscosity is also going to rise but in case of gases sorry in case of liquids the, as the temperature rises the viscosity is going to reduce and in case of gases as the temperature rises the viscosity is going to increase this behavioral differentiation exists due to the difference in the intermolecular force of attraction all right so this difference in their behavior exists due to differences in the intermolecular forces of attraction all right now this can this variability can be explained by the arrhenius equation this variability can be explained using the arrhenius equation okay this arrhenius equation states what it says that value of eta is equals to a e the power e a upon r t okay this sigma this sigma this uh, sorry this symbol is for the viscosity okay this a is what this is a constant this is a constant which depends on the volume of the liquid or the fluid this is a constant which depends on the molecular mass and volume of the fluid that that is under the consideration okay similarly this ea is the activation energy okay and this r is the universal gas constant this r is the universal gas constant which is valued at 1.98 kelvin mole inverse kelvin inverse and this t is nothing but the temperature okay so this is a very simplified equation where we can see where we can mention the temperature dependence on the how the viscosity of material is going to get affected based on the temperature profile based on the temperature thing that causes a variation between the intermolecular forces of attraction between the matter that you have been focusing on okay so this is a basic representation of the same okay so now moving on to the next topic